Hi everybody, I hope everybody's having fun, enjoying being part of the Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club. And uh, in this particular lesson, I'm going to show you a thing we've had a lot of requests about on our regular Flower Pro Facebook group about wiring flowers. So in this lesson, I'm going to sort of talk a bit about ribbons. I'm going to show you the basic fundamentals of putting flowers together. Um, I'm gonna talk about sort of like how to arrange flowers, to use in picks and different other products. Um, and also gonna talk about like accents, things you can add to it in sort of enhance your spray. Um, so let's get started. So in most flower sprays, um, usually I'm going to use some ribbons as an accent. Now, this is the air drying clay, sp uh, clay spray. And um, so in this spray here, I have obviously, I've got two, what we call double figure of eight loops at the end. All right, in most of my sugar flower sprays, because if this was going onto a cake, that means that sort of section there where we have the ribbons is the point of entry into the cake. So it helps to almost like disguise where this goes into a cake. Um, now, you can of course use ribbons throughout the spray, meaning that sometimes you'll see sugar flowers or air drying clay flowers or bridal bouquets in fresh flowers where you will have ribbons integrated throughout the spray. Ribbons are a good way to, first of all, obviously fill in gaps and space. So if you had a limited number of flowers, it is a way to help fill it out. Another thing I do quite a lot of is I'll often will use green ribbon um, because green ribbon emulates foliage, all right? So for example, like if I didn't have, say that rose leaf spray there, I could actually cut these tails shorter, but I could have that is a replacement for instead of green uh, foliage, I could have green ribbons. Of course, they could be a darker green or this brighter green, all right? Um, but in a lot of the flowers I do, so for example, this shows a sugar flower spray uh, here, all right? So you can see here in the sugar flower spray, and you can see here, I have got two again figure of eight in a sort of mauve color and this just sort of is again a way of balancing the color so you see the beautiful calla leaves. these are the calla leaves, uh, from my flower pro book two this is the large size calla leaf, like i have in book two on the cake and showed on the videos uh, but you see what i've done here is i've taken that purple color and i've added that accent color uh, at the end all right so it's a really good way uh, also to balance color now sometimes um, in a spray or an arrangement, like for example, this is a topper for a wedding cake. It's actually like a vase topper. But uh, so this is like a freestanding product. And in some of the later lessons, I'm going to show you how I do these type of, and uh, this is really done more as a flower arrangement. When I do wiring of flowers, I'm actually doing more floristry. And this is also floristry, but this will be more like if you took wet oasis and you cut your flower stems and put it in. Now you see how in this spray here, I've got a lot of ribbons, all right? And you see I've got green ribbons in there, I've got purple, I've got blue. And some of the ribbons in there are the green and purple are in a sheer ribbon. That's almost like an organza sheer ribbon. So that also gives a nicer, softer look than maybe a solid satin ribbon. All right, but uh, that just sort of gives you an idea about sort of like toppers, but we will be doing some lessons later on uh, in the club on uh, obviously doing self-contained toppers, which is a nice alternative for a cake. Now, when choosing ribbon, there's lots of types of ribbon. The one used here is actually a grow grain ribbon. So grow grain is obviously has got little lines onto it. All right, um, this is quite a thick type of ribbon. We also have satin ribbon, all right? Now, satin ribbon, when you buy it, all right, this is called double-faced, all right? So if you look at this, you see how it's shiny on both sides, all right? So this is called double-faced ribbon, all right? Um, and it doesn't always say double-faced, but when you look at the ribbon, or sometimes, of course, like in a fabric store, you can also buy ribbon by the yard or by the meter, but if you're buying a spool of ribbon, but as I said, this is double-sided, all right? And then sometimes ribbon, you will buy what we call single-faced or single-sided. So this is actually the, the sort of purple color I use for this particular spray in my class. And you see this is dull on one side and shiny on the other side, all right? So when I show you how to use this, I'll show and explain about how you get all of your shiny side up, all right? Now there are also other ribbons. This is, a, for example, like an organza ribbon. So this is like a sheer ribbon, similar to the ones used in the posy topper. And uh, the important thing to remember is when you choose ribbon, it wants to hold its own weight. That means when you do this with the ribbon, all right, so see when you actually make it into a loop, when you make it into a physical loop, that it actually holds its own weight, meaning it doesn't collapse. 
because especially some of these type of sheer organza ribbons, they're very, very soft. They won't hold their own weight. So they're good for like gift wrapping, but not good for using in flowers, all right, because they're a bit floppy. Um, of course, there are also many other types of ribbon, wired ribbon you can use. Um, and of course, as I said, there's lots of colors and different textures. You can do uh, lace ribbons and things like that can also be used. This, for example, on this knife spray, this is actually like a burlap, a hessian ribbon with a lacy edge. So you see that's very nice for more of a sort of a rustic look, all right? So there are obviously, as I said, lots of types of ribbons on the market. Now, when we make ribbon loops, all right, uh, in your downloadable materials for this lesson, we uh, has in here, this is from a class, so obviously slightly different formatted, but it says here for the spray ribbon loops, gonna make two of these, we're gonna take a 24 inch piece of green grow grain ribbon, all right? So um, we're gonna take a 24 inch piece, all right, which is about 60 centimeters, all right? So basically, I'm just gonna show you here on my ruler here. So this is, 12 inches, 12 inches, so about, as I said, about 60 centimeters, all right? So two ruler lengths, basically, is just a, an easy, and this is actually the size I do a lot of my uh, ribbon loops, is just two lengths of a ruler, a standard ruler, okay? Whether it's a metric or imperial ruler. Now, when you make ribbons, all right, in your instructions here, it then says hold in the center, then measure four inches, all right? So you'd measure basically four inches, or uh, obviously 10 centimeters from from finger to finger, and that is gonna be the length of the loop, all right? Now, um, so I'm gonna show you this based on your instructions, and I'll show you how you would calculate this at home if you're doing different sizes, all right? So I'm gonna start off, first of all, with my piece of ribbon, and I'm going to just take the ribbon, I'm gonna fold this in half, all right? And um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna fold this in half. Now, I'm right-handed, all right? So I have the ribbon between my left thumb and first finger with my thumb underneath and my first finger on top, all right? And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna measure four inches or 10 centimeters. And so I'm just measuring. And then my other thumb on the other end, my right-hand thumb, is gonna be thumb on top, first finger underneath. So it's the opposite. So my right thumb is on top, first finger underneath. My left thumb is first finger, um, my thumb underneath, first finger on top, all right? And then what I'm gonna do is literally, I'm gonna take my two fingers and I'm going to click my thumbnails together, you see? So you take them, so obviously they're opposite. And then when you do this, you click your thumbnails together. And what that's gonna do is going to give you your first loop, all right? So I'm gonna show you that again. So you just hold the ribbon in the middle. So remember, left thumb and first finger. Now, of course, if you're left-handed, you just would hold it with your right thumb and first finger underneath, and then your left hand, thumb on top, first finger underneath, all right? So you're gonna do four inches or 10 centimeters. I'm just gonna move my ruler out of the way. And then what I do here is I just take my thumbs and I click my thumbs together, so this will create my first loop, all right? Um, so this is the how you would do the ribbon. And then what I'm gonna do, using this as sort of like, a little bit like when we use a size guide, we use a master size, we're gonna use this as our size. You're just gonna duplicate those. Now each piece of ribbon you will take, you're going to twist it so that it's gonna sit in the same way. It's gonna be almost like a mirror image of the first one. So you see how I just take the ribbon and I'm just gonna twist it and I'm just gonna do that in line. So you see how what we have here is we have a figure of eight shape. All right, now there is a single figure of eight, which means that when you do that, you would just uh, put the wire over, you cut here and cut here, and that gives you a single. But most of the time I do uh, double or triple, all right? Double being the most popular. Now the other half of the ribbon, which we haven't used, I'm just going to again, just literally, just each time, you see how I'm just twisting the ribbon here like this, all right? And what that does, it gives me a double figure of eight loop, all right? So you see how it's like a mirror image is the same this size as this side. Now then what I do, I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna take a 26 um, gauge wire. Now of course, when you're doing certain colors, like if you're working on white ribbons, pastel, I would always recommend using white wire. For greens and darker colors like reds, burgundies, I might use white or green. But a lot of times for darker colors, I'll use green. For lighter colors, I use white, all right? So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna place the wire over the top. So I'm gonna sort of take about one third of the wire. This is a half piece of wire. Place this over the top and then I'm just gonna fold my ribbon over, okay? And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just tape that and I'm gonna twist it nice and tightly, okay? 
And it's really important you twist it nice and tight here because what that will do, that will hold everything together. You see, and this is going to give you your figure of eight shape. All right. Now then, once you have done that, now a lot of times when I do this, I won't actually trim the tails until after I've got it in the spray. But if you want to do this beforehand, you can do what we call a swallow tail, which is that you cut one ribbon and then the other ribbon like this. So this is like the, uh, the tail of a swallow, all right? So if you think of the, a swallow, it's a little bit like the tail of a swallow, okay? And I'm gonna show you some other variations on this. And then normally you would tape this, so you're gonna take some half length, half width floral tape, and I generally just gonna tape that like so, just taping down the wire, you see? So that's sort of how we do a figure of eight shape. So I'm just gonna show you that one more time. Now this does take a little practice. A lot of you will be tape challenge, ribbon challenge, just like with floral tape. Everybody's in class is a little bit of floral tape challenge, but four inches, 10 centimeters. So remember, right thumb and first finger, right thumb on top, left thumb underneath, all right? And then you're just gonna just click that like this. This is the way I teach it, and just it's an easy way to remember it. And then you're just gonna literally just twist the ribbon, so you just hold the ribbon like that and twist it, so you're really just emulating what you have. So it's like a mirror image, all right? So that was with the first half, and then you're going to then just twist it, you're gonna twist it, and this will give you your next one, all right? And then what I do is turn this over, usually, and then you're gonna take your ribbon, put your wire on the top, you fold your ribbon over, just grab hold of the ribbon, and you wanna twist this really nice and tightly. Now, because grow grain ribbon is quite sick, you have to be, as I said, do a nice satin ribbon, you just obviously is a lot softer. And this will give you your figure of eight loops here, okay? And again, just gonna just trim those, so it's gonna do, generally on these ones, I just do a swallow tail, now, you also ha have to remember some ribbon um, frays a little bit, all right? So just as I said, again, just, you know, try the ribbon out, see how it cuts. But, you know, some of the organza and sheer ribbons can fray a little bit, all right? So these would be my, my loops I would use in my spray, all right? Now, just to show you, if you were doing, um, using a satin ribbon, this is a single face ribbon, all right? So that means, so this is the shiny one side. So if you were doing, the same size, I'm just gonna show you this, the same size. So if you were doing, this is a shiny one. So what I do here is I would take my, if you're using a single face, it means it's shiny on one side, you want the shiny side up. So you hold this in the middle, and again, you'll do exactly the same. So I've done this four inches or 10 centimeters. So you see the dull side of the ribbon is towards me. And then I would then just repeat that repeat that, repeat that, like so, you see? And you see, that's why when we turn this over, when we turn it over, then you see the shiny side is all on the outside, okay? I'll show you this one with a green ribbon because uh, this is a little bit darker. So you fold this over, you're gonna just twist this like so. And again, you see how you'll have your beautiful ribbons. And again, these can be trimmed Like so, okay? So that's how you would do, and you see this is means that the shiny side will be on the outside of this, and all the dull side will be on the underneath, all right? Now if you're using like a sheer ribbon, and I'm also gonna show you, so like for example, if you didn't, if you're doing a larger spray, like a larger bouquet, and you wanted to make bigger ribbons, all right? The thing you generally do is you just would maybe hold this up against your flowers, all right? So if you were, let's say, you had big lilies, all right, and you wanted to have some ribbons, almost the ribbon loop generally wants to be about the height of the flower. So if you're thinking of the, like this height is about the height of a rose, and that's what I have in my spray. So if I was doing a lily, obviously your, your loop would need to be a little bit bigger, you see? So your loop would be a little bit larger. So all you do is you just sort of hold this up against the flower. So if you hold, hold your lily, and at the bottom of the lily where it sort of starts, you just hold the loop, and then you'll see if that's gonna be the right height. Might need to be a little bit smaller, a little bit longer. But once you get that to the right height, then all you're gonna do then, you're just gonna take that piece of ribbon, and you're just gonna measure that on my size guide. So that actually, so is about six inches or about 15 centimeters, all right? So if, for example, so you've got six inches, so that means that if you're going to make two loops and two tails, you're gonna need 36 
inches of that, or if it's 15 centimeters, you're going to need uh, 90 centimeters, all right? Because basically you have 15 for a loop, 15 for a loop, 15 for a loop, 15 for a loop, 15 for a tail, 15 for a tail, all right? So that's sort of really how you calculate it if you're making double ones. And um, so when you're using, so for example, so that would be 12, 24, 36, all right, or about 90 centimeters, all right? You see, so this is going to just obviously be a longer ribbon. And then you would hold this in the middle, okay? You see this ribbon is a, this is sheer ribbon, but it's also a little bit wider as well. So then you see how I would go 6 inches or 15 centimeters. So then I would make my loop, then I would make my next loop, see? And then here I would make a loop, I would make a loop, you see? So whatever sort of you make just one loop, measure it, then you do six times that length, and that is going to give you a double figure of eight bow. You see? So this is a shear ribbon. Now with shear ribbon, again, turn this over. And what I generally do is I just sort of almost like ruche this up a little bit. Take a wire. Now sometimes I will use a 20, this is a, still a 26 gauge wire, but if you're using some of the wider ribbons or some of the wider wired ribbons, you would use a, sometimes a 24. So again, you're going to pull this together, and you're going to then twist this nice and firmly, and this will give you your, as I said, your organza ribbon. Now you can also do what we call a French cut. Now a French cut is used a lot in floristry. So what you actually do here is you fold the ribbon like this in half, and then when you cut it, so you cut, so it's coming a little bit tighter here, so when you cut this, you're going to cut like that. So you see when you open that out, you'll get these tails, all right? So just show you that again. So what you do when you do a French cut, you fold it in half at the bottom, and then you're going to cut. Now you're going to cut from the folded, and you're going to cut towards the center at an angle like this. So when you cut that, you see how you'll have these nice tails, all right? And that's what we call a French cut, which is like a sort of a V shape. So that is easy to do on a wider ribbon. It's a little bit fiddly on a small ribbon, and especially like something like this grow grain, it's quite difficult to fold this in half, okay, because it's really quite thick. So generally I just do a swallow tail or an angled cut on those, all right? So that's a little bit about ribbon. Um, in the next lesson, I'm gonna to talk to you and put, show you how I actually put the air drying clay uh, flowers together. So I'm gonna show you how we put this together and how we incorporate the ribbons I've just made into this spray. So now we're going to put the uh, spray. This is the air drying um, clay spray that I have showed obviously the components of and went through your instructions in uh, one of the early lessons. So this is actually goes through the assembly of the spray. All right. Now when I teach this, all right, what my students will do is we'll start off with step photograph number one. So on a piece of fun foam or alternatively, which is obviously a thin foam, you could also use just like a, um, a towel, a, you know, dry flannel, just lay your flowers out. Now, of course, it's not so much of an issue with air drying clay because air drying clay is very durable. But when we're doing sugar flowers, generally you want to just lay them out on something so they're just going to have a soft cushion to sit on. So we have the first four components. So here we have the, um, obviously the fern. So I've got the fern number one. I'm right-handed, so I'm working left to right. If you're left-handed, work from right to left. Then we have the rosebud, all right? So this is a tight bud. We have a stephanotis. And then we have also the uh, small rose leaf spray. This is the three small rose leaves, all right? Remember, when you work from the air drying clay uh, lesson, you have how many components you need to create this actual spray. All right. Also, in one of the future lessons, when I talk about pricing, I will actually go through a pricing structure of explaining about cost analysis, breaking down the cost of how much air drying clay I've used, and also how I price each of the individual flowers in this spray, giving you a final price you would sell to a client or customer. All right. So anyway, so we have here the ferns, the rose, stephanotis, and the small leaves. Now, when you are doing flowers, of course, if you're following my photographs, this is obviously how I generally teach. It's easy for my students to work because when they're looking at the fern, when you place your rose uh, bud to here, you can see that the rose bud is sitting about in the middle of that sort of center, that main tip of the fern. Now, when we do a sugar flower spray, as your flowers 
go into the spray, you'll see from the side, they're almost going to be a little bit like a slope, all right? Generally speaking, you're never going to put anything in just completely straight, all right? What you normally do is most things I just use literally like the width of my thumb. Now, of course, everybody's thumbs and fingers vary a little bit, but about sort of the width of your thumb, all right, which is about three quarters of an inch, about two centimeters. And I'm just going to literally just bend that up slightly. I don't usually use pliers um, on something like a rose because it's a little bit severe. But you see from the side, you have just that gentle, just that almost like slight curve, all right? And so then what we will do is we'll take this. Now, the nice thing about this, nothing is uh, set in stone. And so you generally just move things around, all right? So you can sort of see that when I'm looking straight down on there, that is about the center of that main tip of the fern. So this is a really good project to start off with. Nice thing about the air drying clay, the air drying clay is very lightweight. It's a little bit like if you were putting silk flowers together, so it makes it very easy to do. All right, at the intersection where those two naturally meet, I will take some half width floral tape. Now, generally I'm using half width floral tape, all right, for putting flowers together like this, but of course this could also be a moss green, it could be, and sometimes um, you might have a client, especially those of you working in sugar, you might have a client who wants everything white. So that means that, for example, the stems and all of the flowers will be white. Um, it just, I prefer green because it's more natural and especially with air drying clay, I would always recommend green, all right? But you see from the side, you can see how it's this almost like a sort of a slope shape, all right? So that's good. And you literally just go around a couple of times each time. So now we're going to put in our stephanotis and uh, our stephanotis and our um, rose leaves are going to go stephanotis to the right, rose leaves to the left. Now here, I'm going to take this and I'm going to come down with my um, size guide about three quarters of an inch. So it's actually about the thickness of my width of my thumb, but just about three quarters of an inch or about two centimeters. And I just bend this out at an angle, all right? And then I will do the same on my rose leaf here, okay? So you see how one is going to the right and one is going to the left. And then we're going to just pop that into position. Now, the, the stephanotis, as you can see, is gonna sit. So the tip of the stephanotis is about half to about where the tip of the calyx is, all right? So a little bit below from where the tip of the calyx is about here. So that means what I need to do is I need to just hold that with my thumb and I'm just gonna come down a couple more times with my tape so that you put this in. Now, air drying clay is very lightweight, so it's very easy to work with. And I said, this is where it's good. If you haven't put flowers together, the air drying clay is wonderful because it is very lightweight. It's very easy to work with, all right? Um, sugar is a little heavier, especially when you get into a large bouquet. And then I'm gonna put in my rose leaves. So you see how my rose leaves are gonna sort of sit into here, really at the same point. But you see how, so the rose leaves and the stephanos will go into here. Again, just gonna go around a couple of times, all right? So those are my first four components, all right? So it's gonna be like based on photograph number one. And you know, you can just sort of like have that beside you. So you see when I teach, this is sort of how my students, when I teach this class, how they actually go through the process of obviously doing each of the steps. So then we're gonna move on to step number two. So then we're just gonna then add in the baby's breath, the stephanide, the uh, gypsophilia. All right, we're just gonna put in here when I teach this um, in my class, I just do one spray of uh, baby's breath. In the main photograph um, here, you can see I've actually got like three sprays of baby's breath. So, you know, of course, uh, when I teach this as a class, it's a one day class. So my students have a limited amount of time at home. You could, of course, make three, uh, three sprays of the baby's breath, okay? So then the baby's breath, the gypsophilia, is gonna go in and that's gonna sit in. So again, just gonna take your pliers Literally, I've just got one of each size bud, one of each size flower, and you see how that's gonna sort of sit into there. And the baby's breath is a, has a wonderful way of softening uh, the whole effect of a spray. Just bringing in a spray from over here, you can see here, again, like on this red rose spray, but you see how this beautiful spray here, I've obviously got the sort of the, the baby's breath. So just like when you buy fresh roses, having obviously those, those flowers um, with your foliage, and your baby's breath really softens the whole thing. So we're going to put the baby's breath in. Now then we're going to move on to, to photograph number three, which is going to be the calla lily. All right, so you have your calla lily, and then we'll have our rose, all right? But you can see also as we're going down, we've now sort of, 
created also widths as well. So think of it almost like a sort of a slice of pie. So as you come down, the pie becomes wider on a real piece of pie or pizza. And uh, it's going to be the same with your sugar flowers. And then as we sort of, um, as we add in the flowers, you can see from the side, you can see how the, you have this almost like this sort of slope, okay? So we're going to come down a little ways. Now because the calorie is quite long, all right, we're going to take this and this is going to be held right at the bottom and just going to bend it at a slight angle, okay? And you're first of all just going to place this where you feel it should go. And again, if you look at the photograph there, you can see how this is going to go in. So it's actually going to go in. So it's going to be sort of almost like about half the length of the here of the bud. So you see how I've actually got to take down quite a ways here. All right, so I'm just going to just tape down. And remember, if you tape down too far, okay, so then what you do is you just try this out, all right, and see if that's going to work out okay. If you did tape down too far, you could just tape back on yourself and then sort of put your flowers in, all right? So we're going to take now the calla because I said the calorie is quite, is quite large or quite long, so that's going to sit in, which I know looks a little strange because you have this big gap here, all right, but this is going to be filled in uh, in a moment. So then what we're going to do is going to now take your calorie, just go around a couple of times. On this calorie, I'm not using any of the tubing because it's not visible, but if you were doing calories more open structure, you of course could add the tubing if you desired, all right? So then we're going to, uh, so that will be your, your calorie, and then your rose is going to sit in here. Now the rose, again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my fingers. Generally roses, as I said, I'd very rarely ever bend them with pliers because it's a little bit too severe. So what I like to do is, again, just using my thumb, all right, I'm just going to sort of bend the rose up, but a little bit more at a, almost like a right angle, you see, all right? And then that will sit into here, so that will sit into the spray like that, but you can see also from the side, you can see how the height of this is going up a little bit, all right? So just make sure it looks okay, all right? So it looks okay in the spray. Coming from the side here, you can see how you've got this sort of height, all right? And then you're gonna tape this in. Now with sugar, with sugar flowers, all right, sometimes sugar roses, of course, are gonna weigh a lot more than this one. So what we will sometimes do with sugar ones is you would take a, if you find your roses a little bit heavy, you could take a wire, like for example, a 24 gauge wire, and then what you can actually do here is you can thread the 24 gauge wire over the top there, like so. So just gonna come over the top. You wouldn't do this on air drying clay. And then you just would like, just, just twist the wire just a few times, just showing you. And then you see, then you can just cut that off that little tiny piece. So what you're actually doing is you're almost just sort of wrapping the wire around just right at this bottom part here, and that will help to hold things in place, all right? But usually you'd only do that on heavier sugar flowers. Like if it was a peony or something like that, like if this spray was made as a, um, as a you know, this is obviously air drying clay peony, but if you had obviously a large peony in a spray like this on a larger scale, that's what I would often do. You can also use little zip ties. I'll be showing you zip ties a little later on when I talk about knife sprays, all right? So you'd put, put this in here like so, all right? So you can see how now we're at step number three, all right? Now step number four is going to be the Stephanotis. So again, I'm just gonna bend this just slightly. So you see the Stephanotis, and you see the Stephanotis will come from behind here, like so, and again at an angle, but you see how that just fills in that space, space here, you see? So when you put flowers together, it just really is practice, all right? It's a little bit of confidence, a um, little bit of practice. I was fortunate when I uh, grew up in Essex, I used to work in a flower shop, and I helped in a flower shop on Friday afternoons and Saturdays. And, and that really helped me a lot because working with fresh flowers gave me a lot of confidence working with sugar flowers, all right? But um, it really is just a question of practice. The more you do of this, the easier it will become. But remember, if something doesn't look right, you can easily take it out. So don't, you don't usually want to start taping until you've looked at it, all right, looked at it from all di different directions. Now, the other thing is to consider is, is the flower, are the flowers being viewed from the top? Are they coming down the cake? Are they going up the cake? That sometimes will be a difference in when you, as when you assemble them, sometimes how you put things together, all right? So we're gonna put in the Stephanotis. Um, and then we're going to then put in the 
Last couple of components. So we're going to put in the hydrangeas. They're going to sit in the side. And you see how the, the you see how the, the length of the hydrangeas is quite long, right? So you see because you don't want to put them in like that because you won't see them, okay? So you want to bring those up. So you see you're thinking of the sort of the the height of your rows as your as your guide, you see? So you can see from the side there, the hydrangea is going to be quite long. I'm just going to pop these in. I'm just going to pop these around. So we're going to go around with your hydrangeas. Of course, you can just move things out with your tweezers or with your fingers. And just remember, you know, the air drying clay because it's very lightweight. If you're working with a sugar spray, so if I was putting together you know, this like spray like this, all right? Or if I was putting together the large spray I showed you over here, you know, this is quite heavy. When my students put this together, um, they a lot of times, you know, is they get someone's cramp in the hand. So it's always a good idea to have, for example, like a pillow or some thick foam. You can just lay the flowers down because if you suddenly get cramp, um, you obviously don't want to uh, obviously have drum or drop in your flowers. But anyway, so when you get to this stage, we then do what we call the return. Now the return is what is returning back on itself, all right? If you look here in this spray, all right, you see how the ferns are the return. So like if this was a bridal bouquet a bride was carrying, you see the return is the pieces that are coming back on themselves. So you see they're going in the opposite direction, all right? And on the spray here, you can see the return, all right, the return there is actually the like the trailing eucalyptus, the forget-me-not, the uh, rosebud, and then the other calorie. You see how they're coming back. So again, if you were obviously used doing this as a bridal bouquet, if this was fresh flowers and you were holding this, you don't just have this big lump at the top, all right? Um, and this is what we call, as I said, a return. And um, the return is what we use for um, to give you a sort of spray, but it also means when this, especially again, if you're putting this onto a cake, because obviously some of you work in air drying clay and craft, some of you work in sugar. So if this was sugar flowers or air drying clay, clay flowers, these can totally go onto a cake. Um, as I said, you would generally, um, you want to, you don't want to just have this area where you see all the wires, all right? So again, what I'm going to do here, so I'm just going to take this, it's going to be a little bit longer. So I'm actually about two and a half centimeters, about an inch. So pretty much most of these things you have about, most of them are about three quarters of an inch or about two centimeters. And you see how the rose leaves will then sit in the, and you see how the rose leaves now come back on themselves. But you see from the side there, all right, you can see here how you have this sort of beautiful spray. And you're just going to go around with your, with your leaves there. But you see how what this has done is balanced, all right? Um, so you've balanced your spray. Now generally when you are doing flowers, all right, when we do a flower spray, we always work in on your main, main focal flower. Now focal flower in this case is rose, all right? Uh, in the spray here, focal flower is also a rose, all right? So that because generally it would be the largest flower, so in this case this would be the focal flower in here would be a rose. These particular roses are made with individual petals. They're veined on my Flower Pro mat. Uh, but they're veined, they're done with individual petals, so right, rather than the blossom cutter one. But here you have the Bouvardi, you have Forget Me Nots from your Flower Pro Ultimate Filler Flower. Um, I have a Calla Leaf from Book Two. I've obviously got some other flowers, and some of these we're going to talk about also in future lessons using your Flower Pro to create anemones and some other flowers as well. But um, the, and so in this spray here, I have five focal flowers one, two, three four, five, okay? So generally your main flower is your focal flower, right? So focal point, like if you think of focal point of a room, it's the sort of main, like the accent pillow on your sofa um, or a piece of artwork or something, a lamp or a big vase, an arrangement of flowers, so that's your focal point. So focal flower is your main flower, and in this case that is roses, and I have five of them. But you could also do like three roses, so again in this spray here, I've got three roses, all right, and just roses. That's obviously the only flower. And then you have what is called the secondary flower, all right? So secondary flower would be generally, as I said, the sort of the next size down. In this case, in this particular spray, um, this has got actually really like two secondary flowers. The anemone and the calla leaves are both what I would call secondary flowers. And then you have filler flowers, which again, we've got forget-me-nots, we have bouvardia, we have berries, 
those are filler flowers, and then we have foliage, all right? So generally speaking, most bridal bouquets, especially when you think about an actual bride's bouquet, is generally gonna have, obviously, a focal flower, like roses, lilies. Then you have secondary flower, which could be, um, obviously, like a calla or a slightly smaller flower, filler flower, and then foliage. But sometimes you might only have one focal flower, one secondary flower, one filler flower, and one type of foliage, all right? But uh, so in the case here of the roses, Focal flower there is rose. Um, there's no secondary flower. Filler flower is baby's breath. And then foliage is ferns and rose leaves. All right. So there are sort of uh, simplified versions of that. But anyway, so, um, so anyway, so then when we get to this point, all right, we're going to now. Now, something else when you work on a large bouquet, all right. So when you're working on a, a larger bouquet like the spray here, all right, the stem of this will get quite bring this out, the stem of that will get quite thick, all right? So sometimes when you're working on something a little bit heavier, all right, and larger, you, you can also just trim out. So occasionally, some of these, like little, you don't have to do it on this one, but on, like for example, on some of these smaller wires, as you go, so as you come down the spray, periodically you can just trim out these wires here, you know, because these are just like your little smaller um, filler flower wires. So what this means, ultimately, your stem won't get too thick and bulky at the end, all right? Because if sometimes you're making a big spray um, with a lot of flowers, when you get to the end, you're going to have this really, really thick handle, all right? Now, we're then going to take your ribbons, all right? And so the ribbons are going to sit, one is going to go one side, and so you can just actually take the pliers to bend that in. And you're pretty much just going to add that right here, and then the other ribbon is going to go on the opposite side right here. Okay, and I'm going to just tape these in. And then once you've taped them in, you can then just bring them up. But you see how they really sort of just fill out that top. And of course, you could trim these as, as needed, all right? And if you don't want like longer tails, you can just actually trim those to the same length as the bow or just a little bit longer. You know, sometimes like for example, you see here on like this red rose, this looks really beautiful if you have this like on a cake, and then you see how you've got, you imagine if this was for a 40th wedding anniversary, and you have these lovely red ribbons just like hanging on the cake, or if this was going to be done in air drying clay on a frame, or it's just sort of sometimes the ribbons I sometimes want hanging down the cake or in arrangement, or if you're putting them into a, a vase, you know, you want the, ri the ribbons hanging down. That really is just personal, personal choice. Now, you're then going to, so you get to this point here where we've taped everything in, so now we're going to tape down. Now, if we were going to put this into a cake, all right, so if this was going to go into a cake, here in the United States, our standard depth of our cake is four inches or 10 centimeters. In the UK, uh, which obviously things are changing quite a lot because fruit cake is not so popular, but in a sort of classic fruit cake, a fruit cake is normally three inches or about seven and a half centimeters. In uh, parts of Europe where we have entreme style cakes, which sometimes would have decorations like this on it, that's often two inches or five centimeters, all right? So generally speaking, um, if you were doing a standard um, cake, like here in the United States, where we were gonna go into a four inch cake, normally what I do here is I would make this about, uh, usually about uh, two and a half, three uh, inches, about six to seven centimeters, all right? It wants to be always shorter than the cake. Now, when you get to this point here, but if this was for air drying clay and for craft, a lot of it is going to depend maybe if it's going to go into a vase. You would often keep it long because then it gives more stability into a vase. But if, let's say, you're going to hot glue this onto a frame, a photo frame, you, of course, could just cut this to whatever length you wished. At this point here, all right, so this point where I want to trim it, I'm going to use some wire cutters here. Just going to cut through with the wire cutters. And sometimes on a larger spray, you'll have to separate it into like three smaller groups. And then I keep a little bit of tape here, and this is quite important. And then what we're gonna do here is around the end here. So on the end here, we're going to just take your floral tape, all right? And you're just gonna wrap around the end, and you're just gonna come past the end of the wire just a few times, and then you like fold this over, you see? So what I've actually done is I've secured all of those, all of those wires into here, because again, on a bridal bouquet, this is pretty much how we would do that, and then of course we put some type of padding on here, um, like a, um, 
and then you'd add usually ribbon on top. But again, if this was going to be worn like as a, by a mother of the bride or the sort of mother-in-law as a sort of bouquet, as a, a boutonniere um, or as corsage, for example, like you could use this for a groom's man or for obviously the mother of the bride or the mother-in-law, this could be worn as a corsage. You don't want to obviously have bare wires here, okay? And that's sort of how you would finish this off. And then of course, as I said, you can, you can usually cut your ribbons to, so then you can, and so that's why I was saying that right at the beginning when I was showing you the ribbons, sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually wait till I get this put together and then I would then trim my ribbons afterwards, okay? But you see how you have your lovely spray here and you see how the green ribbon has really enhanced the look of this. Um, and as I explained when I did the air drying clay, you know, this is really just exactly the same, but this one is done with the peony. So this is the quick peony from book two um, that I made instead of the rose and rosebud, I have a peony and peony bud. And that just gives you an idea of an alternative. But of course, you can also, um, you know, make a couple of sprays like this for a cake. So you could have these. And then the other thing you can also do is sometimes we would actually wire these together. So you actually can actually physically integrate those into each other and then you can wire them together. So you could do, and this would give you a sort of a spray that you could use, you see in like a long spray. And this would be really pretty like for say a table centerpiece, you could do this into a vase. So that could be done like that, or you can actually just take both your wires. All right, so generally when you get to this point, you just will take your wire here and you just right at the bottom there, you're just gonna bend that down at a right angle. So of course you could take the same, the other one like that and of course then you could also just wire those together as well so you see you'd actually just wire the two stems together and that would make obviously a spray and as i said this would be really pretty for a sort of like as i said for a, the bottom of a picture frame or you could use this obviously in a vase all right um and sort of that so that is how we would put the um the air drying flower clay flowers together so remember in your lesson on making air drying clay flowers in the directions it has the number of components used for this spray. And in this lesson, we're um, obviously putting those components together. It has the ribbon lengths and obviously how you put this together. Um, in the next segment, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, how to calculate number of flowers, making them in air drying clay or in sugar. So I'll be right back. In creating sugar flower sprays and air drying clay, clay flower sprays, I will often use uh, to practice, but also to calculate how many I need to make in sugar or in air drying clay, uh, silk or fabric flowers. Now, so what we're looking for is we're looking for buying flowers that are gonna be a comparable size to our sugar ones. For example, this is a sugar, um, obviously large size rose. So this is made with Flower Pro, the large size uh, rose cone, and the 110 millimeter, which is the largest blossom. And you see this is a silk rose that is about exactly the same size. So you don't necessarily have, doesn't matter what color they are. And also quality wise, I mean like these are actually just from like the dollar or pound store. They don't have to be real pretty, but you see that that is approximately the same size as my lily. This is obviously my uh, orange lily, the medium size, the smaller size lily from my Flower Pro Lily Mold. But you see that is about a comparable size flower, all right? So it's just a question of looking out and then when you see flowers that you know are gonna be about the right size um, as your sugar ones, then you can just obviously buy those. A lot of times you get these on discount clearance at the end of the season and things. Um, and uh, obviously you can use these. So I have a huge box with lots and lots of silk flowers in. And when you buy silk flowers, a lot of times they'll have, these are just the, the original stems they came on. And these are about comparable to about a 20 gauge wire. So these are fine. But see this rose obviously has a very natural stem. Like obviously it's thick, it's too thick to put together. So a lot of times when you're making flowers uh, with silk flowers, when you're practicing, you just will pull this off. You see, so I'm just gonna just pull this off of the, here we are. And you see how what that's done, you, most of the time you're gonna have a little uh, piece of plastic with a little hollow there. And then you take a 20 gauge wire, because this is obviously, if you're making this rose, you put it on a 20 or an 18 gauge. So an 18 or 20 gauge wire, and just gonna squash this. And then what I would do there is just sort of make sure that's gonna fit into there, okay? And then normally, just gonna take a little bit of hot glue. So I'm just gonna take just a little bit of hot glue um, or you could use like a PVA glue, but the hot glue obviously sets instantly. 
So I'm going to pop a little bit of hot glue onto the onto the end of this, and then I'm just going to pop that into the into that centre there, like so. So if you needed to just sort of stick the calyx back, if your calyx opens up, you could just stick the calyx back onto here. So you see, I'm just going to stick the calyx back, stick the calyx back on there. And of course, if necessary, you could even trim these as needed. All right. And then of course, you can take these. Um, so literally, you'd have a box. So this means when you're working with a client, all right. So when you have a client, and for example, they tell you they want to, uh, you know, they're going to have a say a six inch, um, like 15 centimeter top tier of the cake and they want you to do a uh, topper for that cake, all right? That means you can just get out your silk flowers based on obviously what they're interested in, where it might be lilies and roses, all right? So I'm just gonna show you here the concept. So for example, here, I've got my lilies, all right? So what this means, you could take your lily flowers, maybe put like a rose, could go, rosebud could go in the middle here, like so. You could then just put this together and of course, you can just start taping this. This is also a good way to give a conceptual idea to a customer of like what the cake would look like, you see? So you could just sort of put the lilies in here. And then I have here, these are some sort of like marigold type of flowers, but these would be about comparable to the small uh, sunflower. You see, so a lot of times when we're doing a, uh, for example, like a uh, round cake, like a, what we call a posy, or a, uh, as I said, uh, sometimes called a nosegay in Victorian times. Nosegays were actually really a form before obviously tweeting and emailing and texting friends. It was like obviously like a decoded love letter. So there are uh, books you can buy and on the internet you can find um, called the language of flowers because each flower has a significance. And so when your sweetheart or admirer would send you flowers, it would be almost like an encoded message. But you see how you're working, so you see how I'm working and here again in odd numbers, so I have one central rosebud, but then you see how I've got the three lilies and the three orange, the three uh, orange like uh, marigold type of flowers. Now when you're using, when we're wiring leaves, again, the way we normally do this is you just would like cut the stem of the leaf and here you just would take a, so this would be pretty much like when we do floristry, when we wire in rose leaves, this is basically how you do it. And you just make a loop through the wire here, all right? So this, this wire, and you just catch that through the top. So you see how it just, it goes above the top of the, the top leaves. And then you're just going to just wire tape this around. And you see how then that would actually, so the loop just goes through that top piece. And again, you just would take that so, and again, these would be about, this is about the approximate size. It's not the exact same shape as the Flower Pro ones, but it doesn't really matter. But this is the comparable size of the extra large Flower Pro leaf cutter and then the large Flower Pro leaf cutter, all right? I've also got some leaves here that you could use, like, for example, like the daisy leaves. You could use, obviously, uh, some of the other, like, poppy leaves, you know, to give you that. So just remember, the thing is you want to try and find things that are comparable size, okay? Now it might also mean you might need to trim something down. So you could actually just use your rose leaf cutter and just draw on that and just trim it to that basic size. You see, so you just would then go into here. So these are gonna go out where the orange leaves would be like this. And then you see then I could go, for example, in here. Of course you could add ribbons to this as well, you see? So then what you would do is you could just take this. So let's say this would be really pretty for the fall, for the autumn time in these colors. And then you would just take this. And then of course you could use um, a cake board or you could use a cake dummy, um, or you could just use um, like a, just a, as I said, ruler. All right, just to sort of see how that would fit. So this is your six inch cake, you see? So that's basically would be the size. So this would be a perfect size topper to go on top of a wedding cake, all right? Then you see what you then do is because you've now already had a lot of experience putting it together, but you now take this apart and you count the components because you might have filler flowers in there and other things. So you take this apart and then you'd actually then count like, so in this case we have one tight rosebud, we have three uh, small lilies, we have three small sunflowers, we have um, obviously you'd need to make three extra large rose leaves, six large rose leaves, and then six, uh, three poppy leaves, you see? 
So what this means, when you um, are uh, then really giving the quote to the customer, um, you can then actually tell them, well, this is what we're going to use. You could do a quick screenshot of this just to give them the idea of what it would look like. Explain these are in silk flowers, but this will obviously be made in air drying clay or sugar. And so then the customer will have a little idea about what this is going to look like. And it's a really, really good way to um, practice, but also to calculate exactly how many flowers you're doing. Because a lot of times when we make sugar flowers, you will sometimes think, oh, well, that will be enough, say like six roses for a topper for a cake. And then when you actually start putting it together, sometimes a few hours before the wedding, you'll realize you should have made nine or 12 roses, all right? So this is a good way because as long as these are the same size as you make in sugar, in theory, you're just duplicating what you have in silk or fabric flowers into sugar or air drying clay. So that's a really good tip for you. So just keep a lookout for fabric silk flowers, same sort of size as you make your air drying clay or your, uh, your sugar ones would be, um, and use those as your guide and just keep. Remember, it doesn't matter what the color combination looks like. It could be a hideous color combination. Really what we're doing here is just using these for calculation of size and number of components you will make. So when I come back, I'm going to talk about some other different accents we can use for weddings, like knife sprays, etc. For weddings, I like to make little what I call knife sprays. So what I would do is, you know, when you're making your flowers, you just would make a few additional flowers. So like, for example, if you think about the, uh, the wedding spray I have here on the front of book one, um, obviously you've got like roses, Stefan, where's baby's breath. So I've just got here a little tight bud, a little mid-sized rose and a Stephanotis, a little fern. So it's really almost just like some odd. So just make a few little odd flowers uh, in the same range that you have here. Um, you could also do like this is one with a little small rose, some ferns, and then obviously hydrangeas, all right? So that would, if you are wedding cake, add white roses, hydrangeas, and ferns on. So whatever you've got there. It's just a way of balancing color because a lot of times on a wedding cake, so let's say, for example, this was on a wedding cake, this rose, red rose spray. So white rolled fondant wedding cake, you have this beautiful spray of red roses cascading down from the top of the cake. And then it's on, a, say, a white tablecloth on the board. The only thing you're going to see is going to be the red roses. So if you take, for example, just a rosebud, a couple of leaves, a little ferns, some baby's breath, and make those in addition, what you can then do is you could then actually wire those onto the cake knife or the cake server. Now, traditionally in uh, a lot of countries, we use a wedding cake knife like this. In England, when we're cutting a fruit cake, this is a serrated knife. But uh, in some countries like here in the United States, we also use a server, which is a little bit almost like a pie server because our cake is a soft sponge cake. So whatever you're using, whether it's a cake knife or a cake server, you can do this. But this also looks really nice in the photographs with the bride and groom with obviously when they have a photograph of holding the knife because you have obviously the flowers that match the cake. Now, there are a couple of ways to attach these. So this is just a little spray like this. One way would be just to take some white wire. I have here some, um, this is a 24 gauge wire. So what I would do is here, I just would thread this through, full length wire, just thread this through the spray. Just to go in a couple of times like this. And then you see you can actually then just wire this onto the, onto the knife. Just be a little careful obviously with the blade there just where the handle of the knife is there. I'm just going to just go around with my wire. Again, I'm just going to twist this a couple of times and then you can just take the wire. And you might want to put gloves on when you do this, cotton gloves or uh, latex gloves, just so you don't get sort of, uh, especially if the knife is being cleaned with silver polish or whatever. So you're just going to just obviously just wire that around a couple of times. And I'm going to take one of the pieces of wire and then we're just going to twist that. So you can just twist it, just going to trim this off. So that's just done with wire, which is sort of simple to do. And then what I would normally do is I've got the same ribbon I used on the spray. So I just would then take some more ribbon. And then what I'll do here is I'm just going to go around with the ribbon. So I'm just going to go around, you know, two or three times. Really what you're doing is you're just disguising where the, see how I've just gone around with some ribbon around here then literally you can just tie a knot in the ribbon. Just do that at the back, the underneath there. And of course you could also, so you could just cut that or you can also just make here, we can actually make just an additional bow as well. So you could then just make a little tied bow. Let's pull this through. 
So you see how I've just made an additional little bow here, like that. Then you can just trim off your ribbons, like so. This is just a little um, acrylic um, knife rest. So basically what it is, a piece of acrylic with obviously this. And you see then your knife can just sit onto here. So then when this is put on the table, it means that you have obviously this nice knife spray. So then when the bride and groom come up to obviously to cut the cake, they're holding that, you're going to have this nice uh, spray of flowers in the photograph. It also, you know, it just uh, adds a little bit of color balance to the cake spray. And this is something that I normally just, uh, you know, do as part of the wedding service. You know, part of the service I'm offering to the client, I usually just make a little spray. And then normally I would ask the client, you know, do they have a cake knife or if not, these, um, this is obviously a silver one, but you can buy very, very inexpensive ones online with like a pearl handle. Um, they're only about you know five us dollars about four pounds very inexpensive so if the client didn't have a knife you could just basically provide that for them just give them the knife with a little spray of flowers on another way you can put the knife on is using zip ties now zip ties are also a good way when i showed on the wiring of the spray if you're putting heavy flowers together when you're doing a bouquet and you find that you get to a point where you need some stability you just literally put the zip tie through the flowers and you just can pull that and you can get just white clear or clear uh, zip ties and you pull that just trim it off and that's going to sort of hold the flowers together that's also good on a posy if you have a large posy where the flowers are flopping a little bit you can put that through the posy pull it nice and tight and it will hold everything together but uh, a zip tie works well here so here i have a little bit more of a rustic look so this spray knife spray is obviously here you have that so you can just go around with your zip tie you see i'm just going to pull this in to here like this you see i'm just going to pull that nice and tight the zip tie there so it's really not really noticeable just going to trim that off and just sort of rearrange your little flowers here these are actually these ones are air drying clay all right so obviously i can move these around very very easily these ones are sugar ones here so you can you know do sugar or air drying clay this also if you do them in air drying clay even if you're doing sugar flowers on the cake you can do egg drying clay ones to to match there so you're just going to pop the little block of acrylic there you could also do like a piece of wood you know so you could just use a piece of wood i've also done for weddings um, i did weddings for a friend as she got married at a winery so i actually used just a wine cork so what i did is i took a wine cork and i made a little um, sword with a serrated bread knife into the wine cork and had it this way and then just put the, ha the uh, blade of the knife into a wine cork so there's lots of sort of fun things you can do but you see here how you would then take your and this would make uh, knife sprays, all right? So these are a really nice addition to um, obviously any wedding, any celebration, 50th wedding anniversary, whatever, you can do some really fun things. But with your air drying clay, this makes also a lovely keepsake. Um, so even if you said you were doing sugar on the cake, you could do air drying clay flowers to match for the knife spray. On some of my craft projects I've done, um, I've used uh, air drying clay flowers, also hot glued onto the champagne flutes to match. So that means you have the two champagne flutes and the wedding cake and everything will match beautifully. But these make really nice keepsakes uh, for the client or the family to uh, remember the beautiful wedding or celebration from. All right. Now in the next um, segment, I'm going to show you some accents we can use uh, in amongst flowers for sprays. So in this segment, I'm going to talk a little bit about using other accents rather than ribbons. So something I use a lot of are wire loops and like little curly cues, look a bit like corkscrew willow. So this is some, uh, here I have a 22 gauge brown, a white wire. I've got, it could be white or green, and I've got brown floral tape. But you can do this with green, you can do this with also floral tape comes in gray, pastel colors, also comes in silver and gold. Just using some full width brown tape and what I would then do, you just would start taping. So I'm just going to tape about three quarters of the wire, like this. I'm going to come down. And then when we get to the end, this, we're going to do this very much like we will uh, when we make this sweet pea tendrils. Uh, we are going to get to the end of the wire, and you're just going to literally just carry on twisting just as though the wire is still there. See, that's the actual end of the wire there. So you're just going to just twist with your fingers like this, all right? So that is just literally just twisted floral tape. Then you cut that. Now cut it at an angle so you get like a little bit of a taper 
on the end there. And then you can use, like for example, this is a poly dowel, you could use a wooden spoon handle, this is a medium pin, basically just sort of something about the size on average of your little small pinky, your little finger, okay? And um, so then what you do is you would take the wire and you just would wrap that around. So the top of this part is just wrapped around here. And then when you take this off, you're gonna get this almost sort of like a little like corkscrew, um, as I said, uh, willow. So you're going to get this little curly cue. Now these could be used standing up in a tall arrangement to give height. It's fun as well because you can actually do these in white. You could then use, for example, for craft, you could spray these with spray adhesive and then sprinkle them with glitter. Um, you could do these in white, for example, for a wedding cake, a winter wedding cake, do these in white. Uh, brush glaze on here or spray lacquer. And then what I've done is I've used some of the um, like disco hologram dust, which is a sort of non-toxic product we use on cake and done like the snow sparkles. So you're gonna get like frosty branches. So there's lots and lots of fun things you can do with this. Um, in this spray here, you can see this is for example, a photograph of a spray I made where I did it in white, green and black. And what I've actually done here is you see how I've used these in the bottom of the spray there. So I've got a couple of these wired into the spray. You can see here the first stage of the spray where I've got the actual little branches wired into there. This has got some dendrobium orchids, some calli, stephanotis, some white iceberg roses, and some berries. But it just gives you an idea about uh, how you can use those. And then um, the other thing that I use a lot of are, for example, like different shapes. So here you can see we actually have like three black loops. This is just an alternative. So although I still have ribbon in there, but it's a nice way in a more contemporary arrangement uh, to create this effect. So this is actually black floral tape. So you can buy black floral tape. And what I've done here is I've just taped down from top to bottom on a 22 gauge wire like this. And then you decide on how big you want this to be. So you're just gonna go around a container, um, just something size circumference you want it to be. So you see that's gonna give you the round shape. Okay, and then all you then do is you just tape that where that meets. And you see then these would just be added uh, here in this spray. These were, be, were added to the roses. So for example, this is um, a rose spray. So let's say, for example, this was for a uh, you know, 40th wedding anniversary and you had red and silver, you could do these with silver floral tape. Alternatively, you could just use white floral tape or gray floral tape and paint them gold or silver. And then you see then you could actually add, for example, like three of these loops, one, two, three in silver or gold on say yellow roses, just to match in with the sort of the, the color scheme of the celebration or wedding. Um, so it's a really sort of fun thing to do. And you can do, also you can change the shape of those. Uh, you could make them into more of like an elliptical shape like this. So if you were doing, let's say a tropical arrangement, you could do this in green and you could put these in to emulate more of a, like a modern contemporary style leaf. Uh, you could make heart shapes. Uh, with these, so you can actually turn that into a heart shape. So if you're doing, say, for Valentine's Day, you could pinch that in the middle here, but you could actually just mold that into a heart shape. So there's lots of ways of using those uh, in arrangements and in different ways, all right? Painting, things like that. On my daffodil, um, on my lesson, um, on making daffodils, I showed how to make also the daffodil loops, uh, leaves into loops. I was explaining this is something I use a lot. So in, for example, sometimes when I'm doing an arrangement, um, I would use daffodil leaves. So again, just showing you in here, but you see how you could actually add these into your, into with your, you see how that looks really nice. And especially when you would use in certain, like more modern tropical flowers or things like that, you could use these daffodil leaf loops like I showed on the daffodil class. If you haven't watched that, that's the daffodil using the Flower Pro Ultimate Sunflower. But you could use these leaves in amongst your, your roses or your, um, as I said, more contemporary style flower. So as an alternative on say this cake here, you could use those to create this sort of more modern look to the spray. All right, so, so there's, but there's lots of accents. I mean, sometimes people use pearls and uh, feathers and different things. I'm not a great lover of some of those because I find they're a little bit distracting away from the beautiful flowers. But that is, as I said, some things made using floral tape. In this last segment, I'm gonna talk a little about 
ways of obviously inserting flowers, mostly into cake. So this is not necessarily so much for craft application, but also if you were using air drying clay flowers in a cake would still be the same. Now, there are many options we have. This just shows a few examples, gonna just talk about those in turn. So first of all, these are called poly dowels, all right? These actually have a, a ribbon in them. So you can see there are sort of, a, these are the uh, regular size poly dowels. I do have these made on my website in the signature, my signature green, but these are available in the UK um, in white, obviously, and they have the two sizes as well, but they're just called poly dowels. And um, so, but these are food grade plastics. So obviously these are made to go into cakes. And what's really nice about these, I use these a lot. Uh, they're very easy to cut with a pair of scissors. Um, and so for example, if you were going to use your uh, air drying clay spray and you wanted it like standing up in a cake. So what you do there is you just would cut this generally to the, uh, to the depth of the cake, all right? So that would be seven and a half, ten 10 centimeters. Um, you usually cut it just a little tiny bit shorter. So I'm gonna do this about nine and a half centimeters, about three and three quarters for a four inch cake. And you see then this fits beautifully um, on the end of the, on here. Now, when you put that on, you see this is a nice snug fit, all right? So that is a perfect size. So if you're gonna stick this into the cake, so then you just would basically take your pair of pliers, you would push this into the cake because you never should stick wires directly into a cake. Uh, whether they're sugar flowers, air drying clay flowers, because wires can go rusty. It's also not food grade. So you always have to have a barrier between the cake and the flowers. It also means the client can then just pull the flowers out and take them. Now, if you put the flowers into say the straw and they're a little bit, they're moving around a little bit, meaning it's not a snug fit. What you would then do is you just would come back and just take your floral tape and you just would go around a few extra times like this, just a few extra times with your floral tape, just at the point where it meets the straw. So then when that goes into the straw, it's gonna give you a really nice snug fit, all right? So that's sort of how you would uh, use this into a cake. And of course, you could also do this if you were doing this onto a cake where you wanted it like laying on the top of the cake, you could bend this at an angle. So you'd actually have your stem at an angle. And again, you just would put this in and then again, this would just go into your cake um, and then once you get it in the cake, you just move your ribbons around like so. And you just would then take that and then this would actually be inserted into the cake or coming down the cake on one of the tiers. You could of course also have this coming down at an angle like this. So this could be pushed into the cake. So it would go into the tiers of a cake so then it would cascade down. Now in most of my Flower Pro um, videos from my uh, obviously Flower Pro line, uh, most of them I do show how to take the flowers, like the peonies and the sunflowers and the different flowers that I've used and use them in different ways on cakes. So if you haven't watched all of those, go back because each of them focuses on different things. I'm just really doing an overview of things we use. This is good for a larger spray, like when we do, for example, like a big spray, all right? And on actually my peony video, I showed how to do this. And that is if you take two if you take two smaller, if you take two small poly dowels and then you take one of the large poly dowels and what you actually do here, and I do this a lot, I use this technique a lot on cakes. So see what you're actually doing there is you're making four cavities, all right? So what you do there is you take that and then I just use a little bit of hot glue just right at the bottom there to secure that. And then just take like a little piece of fondant or gum paste and push onto the bottom. So this is an example of what it will look like. So you're making like a cap on the bottom and you see then you have actually a, um, a sort of a holder, we'll push this into the cake. You have obviously multiple, you've got four cavities there. So on the, uh, for example, on the um, peony video, I show using the peony leaves and bud coming from one, then I have the flower in another, and then I have the two sets of leaves in the other two. So that is also good for like a topper. If you wanted to do, arrange the flowers into a topper and you don't want to actually sort of like wire the whole flowers together, you could push this in the top of the cake and you could even do two or three of these like in a triangle so you'd actually have eight or 12 cavities and each of the wires will go into these like a little holder you see so you just but you just hot glue two smaller straws inside so that's a really good one but if you watch the peony one i show how to do that with the uh, classic peony all right now um, other things you can also use are straws these are for example bubble tea straws so like most asian grocery stores supermarkets carry these for bubble tea um, and these work really well again they're food grade 
You can use regular straws. Generally, I wouldn't recommend paper straws. Of course, now uh, a lot of uh, countries are obviously trying to ban straws. So as I said, um, a lot of countries you can only buy paper straws. But there are also natural products as well, like bamboo straws. Um, I've used as well. But uh, as I said, so these are all food grade and you can obviously use these depending on the size of your cake. Coffee stirrers and uh, cocktail straws are good for little individual flowers cascading down the cake. There are also companies like, for example, this is a PME, um, PME uh, UK based company, something we carry as well. Um, and these are available in the United States. But this is the large, this is the medium, this is the small picks. And again, these are good for um, as like a posy topper. You could use this. These are good for obviously medium size sprays and the idea is you just would cut the stem to go into those and uh, cut the stem and again if you find it's a little bit loose you could just go around with your floral tape or you could even put um, like a obviously like a little plug of fondant in there and so that will hold your flowers into place and you just push those into your cake. Um, also companies like Wilton do these flower picks these are made for fresh flowers um, and uh, the idea is you fill this with water and it has a little rubber seal on the top of it. But you can just take that off and then again you can use this for like a posy topper for a cake. All right, so there are lots of different options you have there for straws. Um, but anyway, so those, those are uh, things I use. But I personally use a lot of the poly dowels when I'm doing cakes. I use a lot of these poly dowels, uh, very easy to use. But also they're so easy to cut because they're very easy to cut. You see, so you can cut these very easily to whatever depth you need uh, for your cake. And you'll see me use these a lot in my different Flower Pro demonstrations on the ends of the videos. All right. Another product from uh, the UK is called Safety Seal. So this is a product called Safety Seal. Um, and this is a food grade wax, all right? So the idea is I've already melted this. You just follow the directions. So you melt this for about two and a half minutes in the microwave. But this is really good, like if you were doing a cake where you were doing like a rustic cake and you needed to, say, put a real branch in it. Of course, this could be made with wire and floral tape, but if you were only just to do, as I said, like an actual branch in a real, like a naked cake, what you can do there is you can just dip this in and you can do a second dip if you need to as well. But this forms a food grade barrier. Um, this product is available on Amazon. You can get this in the US and in most countries. Uh, but as I said, it gives you a food grade. Um, some people have used chocolate, melted chocolate, but this is very convenient to use. So if you were going to use, like for example, silk flowers or an air drying clay, say large peony, this is actually silk one, you could again just dip that into the, into the safety seal, take that out, and just give this a couple of minutes. And what this will do, this will actually form an airtight uh, uh, food safe barrier, all right? This means that you don't have to use necessarily a straw there, although you could, but what it means is you basically can push this directly into the cake surface, like if it was a semi-naked cake, you push it straight into your cake, and uh, what this would do, this would stop this. This is also great if you ever have to do fresh flowers, like if you took organic, say, fresh roses, you just dip the stems of them in this product, and that will form a food safe barrier, because sometimes a bride might be insistent on a wedding cake of having fresh flowers. This is mostly more for cake side than craft side but uh, we can use this product also like for example this is like my beautiful antler from my uh, flower pro from my antlers so again you see I could take this and I could just give it a couple of dips like that and you're just gonna let this dry and when it dries it will dry opaque all right so you can see it's starting to go a little cloudy we just leave that for a couple of minutes and you could do a second coat if you wanted to and then once that is firmed up, I could push this into a semi-naked cake. If I wasn't using this product, I would just use a straw like this or a small drinking straw. Um, and uh, that would be how you would put your flowers in, calla leaves, flowers like that. And then the idea is you just leave this to solidify. And then once it's solidified, you see, so you see how that's going opaque now? So I could just do that another little hit there. And you're just going to carefully put the lid on. You let it cool and just put it away. So this lasts forever. And you see how that's going to give you this... Um, this food safe barrier against your cake. Um, because as I said, you never want to stick your wires directly in the cake. You will see a lot of uh, people on the internet where they stick flowers in directly into the cake. But as I said, you have to think about the health risk. Wires are not stainless steel, they're steel. If you wash a steel knife or a steel cookie cutter, you don't dry it, it will go rusty. I've actually seen wedding cakes where when the sugar flowers have been removed from the cake, they're actually rusty inside the cake. So that obviously would be contaminate your cake. I've also seen wedding cakes where flowers have been pushed directly in the cake. And when the caterer or whoever's cutting the cake pulls the flowers out, the floral 
tape comes unraveled because it hasn't been taped tightly enough and stays inside the cake. Um, so those are all things that you never want to do. So you always want to make sure you use a straw, a posy pick, um, something that's going to obviously, as I said, act as a barrier for, uh, for that. So once the flowers are taken off of the cake, um, then you, know, you can use little stands. These are little holders, small and large. So this is a really nice way for a customer, a client to obviously arrange these. As I said, with air drying clay, these could be hot glued onto a frame. And then obviously, say for example, a 50th wedding anniversary, you could have a photograph of the couple and then have the beautiful yellow roses, let's say from the cake used on the frame. You could put these into glass domes. Um, you can do all sorts of sort of fun things with them. And especially with air drying clay, it's a little bit more feasible to keep in and use in the home than obviously sugar. Um, and so that's a sort of fun idea for that. In some of the upcoming um, uh, videos and classes, I will be showing, talking about hoops, so sort of uh, these are some of the Katie Sue hoops. So I will be showing you how I use these. We have some new ones uh, we're working on at the moment. So I'll show you how they work to do beautiful sort of wreaths and hoops on wedding cakes. So those will be in some of the upcoming uh, classes and lessons. And as I explained earlier on, also I talk a little bit about, I will be going showing you how to do some self-contained arrangements. So basically how you would do a topper, like the Wedgwood type of vase, how you'd arrange flowers into that. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on wiring uh, flower sprays, both sugar and air drying clay. Remember, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'd love you to post on the platform. Um, obviously, flower sprays you put in together, and hopefully you've got lots of little tips and uh, lots of little bits of information in this video of how to use your sugar flowers. Just remember it's practice, all right? And nothing's set in stone when you put the flowers together. If they don't look quite right, just take them apart. Remember also the little tips I shared with you, like working with air drying clay, working with silk flowers first, they're a lot lighter. You can practice with those and then go on to your sugar. So until next time, sweet wishes and see you soon.